Leon, I'm 16. I've just uh, been working at Tuat Farms here for about three weeks. And um, I'm pretty keen to find out a bit more what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of years in my apprenticeship. Leon lives in this little cottage a good 15 second commute to milking in the morning. He's got the basics down so now he has a great opportunity to learn more about his future in dairy farming with Graham Hopkins, the farm's manager for the last nine years. OK Leon, well I've taken you away from the uh, cow shed because milking cows is not the only job that you'll do over your apprenticeship. Yep. And we need to show you some of the management things that you'll be required to do. And one of those is measuring the amount of grass that there is in a paddock. And to do that we use this rising plate meter. What you'll be doing is moving across the paddock and about every five paces you place it on top of the grass and push the handle down and lift it up. Okay. And it actually measures the, the height of the grass. The plate meter helps apprentices think of grass in terms of kilograms of dry matter per hectare and the calculations become second nature over time. So it says on there there's 1369 kilograms of dry matter per hectare yep. in this paddock. Farmers need to know so that they can budget for additional feed and it is especially important in a drought. Well Leon, as part of uh, your future in farming at Tuat Farm we encourage our staff to go along to a discussion group which is a meeting of the farmers in the community. What's the idea of having a discussion group? It's so that we can share ideas, we, we encourage the owners, staff to, uh, to come along, we share ideas and we also have the consulting officer comes along and he, he's, he brings his knowledge as well. Basically everyone's in the same boat at the moment, we know it's dry out there. Um, just what we wanted to talk about today was just some options around for people to um, manage the current situation on farms. This is a good community and we do, we do support each other. We, uh, we don't live in each other's pockets but we do, we do support each other and we know that if we need a hand or someone wants a hand we, we're always there to help and they're always there to help us so it is very supportive, it's good. The drought has forced Tuat Farms to buy in additional feed. Apprentice Blair's task is to make sure the feed gets to the animals. Uh, Leon, what we're feeding here is a mixture of uh, palm kernel and maize yep. soilage. Uh, we feed this to our cows mainly because we're so highly stocked we need an extra supplement to uh, keep them going yep. and um, to milk off and um, yeah we'll put it out in some troughs and get it out to the paddocks as well for the cows to eat overnight. So um, where do you learn all this stuff? Uh, I'm doing a level 4 certificate with Ag ITO and, and also a modern apprenticeship at the moment so you learn a lot about feed allocation and uh, f supplemental feeding uh, during your course and uh, yeah it, it teaches you a lot about the value of the feed that you're feeding to your stock and um, how good it is for them. Tuat Farms have 558 acres of land supporting 890 milking cows. The big responsibility looking after a, a herd of this size because each cow is worth between two and three thousand dollars so the, the uh, asset involved is, is huge and uh, there's a big responsibility. can be quite stressful. Uh, you're dealing with animals and you never know just exactly what they're going to do. Graham has called in the local vet Michael to have a look at a lame cow, so Leon gets to help him diagnose it. Oh, you got some lame cows you want me to see? Yeah, we got a few there. We got one real bad one. I'll just put her in the crush for you. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Come on, you. It doesn't take long for Michael to diagnose white line disease. When the cows are walking, stones and mud get shoved up uh, the sort of the side of the hoof. Like imagine if it was underneath your fingernail, yep. and that causes the the hoof wall to separate from the from the uh, adjacent tissue and the and the sole. So um, what can we do to help it or prevent it? You know, the weather conditions play a part, um, and the condition of the races. If you have uneven stony races, the cows are more likely to stand on stones that they can't see. Michael treats the cow before Leon walks up to the farmhouse. He's got a meeting with primary ITO training advisor Francis about signing up for a modern apprenticeship. How's it going? Yeah good, we're just getting into a routine and it's going pretty good here. Yeah. Great, and so you're quite interested in doing a modern apprenticeship? Yeah, that'd be cool. Right, okay. Probably the biggest thing that I look for is, is keenness really really keen they're keen to do whatever you want you know not not so much in work but in life and 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 work as well but uh, they've got to be keen because uh, it it's, it's, can be a demanding job but um, it can be a, a, a nice healthy job as well so Leon has a chance to consider his future while completing the evening milk if he starts out as an apprentice farm worker he can move on to being a herd manager and over time share milking Share milking is when you own, own the livestock but not the land. 
and you receive uh, your remuneration as a share of the milk fat check. Share milking can lead to farm ownership because it allows the share milker to expand their own herd without having to own the land first. We've finished milking for the day and all our hard work is in the vat there. Shortly the tanker will be along and he will take the milk to the factory. He uses this device here which contains all the information from this farm and it also starts up the pump which pumps the milk out of the vat into the tanker. Once he's taken the milk he leaves behind this docket which is a very valuable management tool. Every decision made on the farm has resulted in the numbers on this docket. The money Tuit Farms makes at the end of the year is determined by the total milk solids produced. Milk solids are made up of the milk's fat and protein content. The goal of dairy farming is to produce as much milk solids per hectare as you possibly can at the lowest possible, possible price. Farming is not all work. Leon's finished for the day just in time as the local young farmers group have turned up for a clay pigeon shoot. The local group chairman Dan gives Leon a few tips. Um, basically, you want to be looking at the trap, yep. down the trap, and when you say pull, you want to watch, watch the clay and follow through it. Sort of a nice flowing action. You want to get in front of the clay, yep. about a foot in front of him, something like that, and then let go at him. Pull. Ambitions in the long term would be to eventually own my own herd and farm and um, just get pretty far in farming. Nice shot! Oh, I, I think Leon started really well and I, I think he's going to go, uh, go a long way because our aim is to, uh, to nurture him and to train him and, and get him to the top and uh, that, that's exactly what we will intend to do. Apprentices gain a diverse range of knowledge including animal husbandry, maintenance and business skills. Graduates can undertake a certificate in production management and a diploma in agribusiness management with strands in business planning, financial management and resource management. Worldwide demand for milk products is skyrocketing, leading to great opportunities for employment. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.